to the bottom of the sea. Why is this sock here? GTIs are for boring people! Over, what was it, 226, 227, 228, 229, I don't know what's happening. What's up guys, welcome to this POV review by Autotop NL. My name is Martin and today I'm taking a look at yet another Abarth 500. Now, a few weeks ago, I made a video about one of the cheaper ones, one of the earliest Abarth 500s, which had done over 200,000 kilometers and was just a few grand to buy. If you haven't seen that review, click in the top right corner. Now, this is the other side of the spectrum. This is one of the most expensive ones. This is the nicer ones. This is one of the most recent ones which means this is an Abarth 595 and not a 500. A bit of marketing there for you by Fiat. Now, I do really, really, really like this spec. In yellow with that crazy body kit by Abarth. And I think this is the coolest Abarth 500 I've seen in a very, very long time. And it's the coolest one I've actually driven myself. And it's really different to the earlier ones. Today I'm going to tell you all about it. I'm going to take it to the Autobahn. And before we begin, I would like you to subscribe to our channel and follow us on Instagram. Thank you very much for doing that. And please like the video. It's all little effort, big result for us. Thank you guys. Okay, so let's get started. Abarth 595. This one has been tuned a bit. Um, this is a competizione, so that means, that sounds cool, um, it's one of the most sporty ones. This as stock has 180 horsepower and already has a few driving upgrades over the Turismo, which is the cheaper one and less powerful one. Um, now as you can see we have these special wheels with a Brembo brake system behind it and Michelin Pilots 4S tires. Really, really like those. Really make a big difference on any car. We have a very pronounced front bumper slash splitter um, with the Abarth written on there as if it's on the intercooler as uh, was the case with the very old 60s Abarths looks very very cool the styling of this thing is just a 10. there isn't a small cute little hot hatch that looks as cool as this one now the back of this car the tail lights are really different from the early models because we now have this piece of body painted within the the tail light unit which um was all tail light with the earlier ones. So we have a complete turbo back exhaust. So that means we have a decap downpipe and after that just straight until here. This is a Regaton uh, exhaust, which is an Italian exhaust manufacturer. And I really like that with this little Italian pocket rocket. Competition badge right here. Looks really cool. Bit of Maserati lettering there for you. Really, really nice. Now, there have been many very expensive Abarth. So you have uh, special editions. Edizione Maserati, Edizione Ferrari. But of the more regular editions, this Competition is the coolest one. Let's have a look at the engine. Let's open up this little banana. <laughs> that, that, that is cool. Yellow hosing, yellow valve cover right there. Is it a valve cover? No, don't think so, but looks like it. Why is this open? Not sure. Um, but it also has this intake kit which is hooked up directly to the turbo. So that makes it sound really, really awesome. I'll show you guys in a minute. Um, this is a 1.4 liter turbo engine 
as the Competizione, it has 180 horsepower and 230 newton meters as stock, which already is enough, I'd say. But this has been tuned a bit, it's got uh, some trickery to make it sound a little more sporty, uh, and it now has 205 horsepower. Uh, and the torque has gone up from 230 newton meters to 305. That's a big step. That's 75 newton meters extra. You really, really feel when you drive this car. Really like that oil cap right there. It's, it's actually metal. How cool is that? Yeah, awesome little car. What do you think of this, guys? What do you think of the looks of the car? Let me know in the comments. And well, is there a competitor to this car? I don't think so. This kind of horsepower in this small package, I mean, there's the VW Up GTI, but that's only a hundred something horsepower. This is twice as much. Okay, so we have a bit of carbon here. Um, we also have some aftermarket carbon, but the biggest problem of the Abarth 500 is the seating position. When I get into an Abarth 500, um, I just sit like I'm being tortured. It's that bad. Max can't even drive an Abarth 500 because he's just too tall. Now, I always knew that there were these crazy carbon bucket seats by Sabel, and I thought that's going to make the Abarth 500 way less handicap. Now, let me show you. Oh, there's a full carbon back, like with my M3. Looks absolutely awesome. I mean, this is a cheap little car and you can get these crazy seats in them. Really, really like that. Matching yellow stitching. Um, and then it looks all super promising. You get in the car and you think, no, 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 why is it up this high? It doesn't make any sense. Come on guys, if you make a super sport seat, just look at how high up that seat actually is. It's absolutely insane. It's, it's this from the, from the floor to the bottom of the seat. So that's a bit of a shame, I have to admit, but it's a problem for taller people. Now we do have this flat bottom steering wheel, which, ah, why is this sock here? I don't like that. Which should make it a bit better for taller people. I'm 185 and I barely fit in here. I'm kind of touching the steering wheel. Um, we have a very nice metal Abarth pedal setup right there for heel and towing, you know. But when, I, when I'm driving, I can't heel and tow because of my knee hitting the steering wheel. And the adjustability of the steering wheel is not that great either. It's just up and down and not towards you. It would have to be here for me to drive this car very nicely. And I just feel handicapped driving this. Now the owner also upgraded the interior with carbon fiber. This is true carbon fiber, real stuff from Italy. Really, really cool. He's also going to make this carbon fiber and this unit right here but there's a waiting list for those parts. Now, there we have it again. The big sausage, as I call it. The least sporty shifter ever put in a car. Just look at how thick that is. You don't feel anything through this big lumpy sausage. Now you can get uh, a metal one from a Barth, which I think would be the best upgrade for this car. We have a valve controlled exhaust, which sounds absolutely awesome, guys. I really, really like it. Um, let's just keep it open.
Okay, we're already in sport mode. My seat isn't in the right position. Oh man, I don't, don't like these seats. They look awesome, but they just aren't. Okay, let's get going. So, we've got pops and bangs, and I really like these pops and bangs. This is a cartoon supercar, that's how I approach this car. And these pops and bangs aren't as repetitive as we normally get them with like Golf GTIs and stuff like that. But these are really like natural. And for some reason, I like them in this car. Or is the exhaust close or something like that? I thought it was louder. Let's try that again. Yeah, there they are. <laughs> it was closed. Jesus Christ, that's loud. Man, what a what a funky little car. <laughs> that torque That torque takes you places I'm telling you guys uh, Mostly bushes on the side of the road <laughs> It really It really has a very very strong pull but It's It's really entertaining to match and to like manage that torque. It's so much fun. The whole car is a lot of fun. You really feel the fact that you don't have a limited slip diff on the front axle. It's, it's just too expensive for this car. This car has to be created on a budget and for the money, it's so much fun. I'm telling you guys, the recipe of a 500, it's tall, it's short, it's, it's square, the weight is really high up. Um, so it's kind of a disaster recipe for a performance car and you really feel it while driving. It's all over the place if you really start pushing this car. The boundaries are easily reached. Um, but that just makes it fun. You get a lot of hissing from the turbo. You get bangs from that crazy straight pipe. And even though you're not even going all that fast, you're having the best day ever. <laughs> why, why do I like this? I, I just do. We also have these carbon inserts on the steering wheel. Even the 12 o'clock marker is in carbon fiber. <laughs> Just look at the leaning of that car when I'm doing like 60. It's hilarious. It's, it's fun. Now, stock these things do about 7.2 seconds to 100. And I thought with that extra torque, I'm not going to improve on that number. It's just 25 horsepower extra. Um, but I actually managed to do a 6.6 .6 run with only 25 horsepower extra. That's, that's pretty decent, right? That's really fast in such a tiny car, 6.6. .6. Now, 100 to 200. I'll show you, you really have to short shift this car, this engine, this 1.4 liter, doesn't like to rev out. It completely dies when, it, when you do. So, at about 5,500 RPM, you really have to shift up. And then, you stay within the power band of this engine, and it's pretty damn fast. It should do 225 as stock. I did 230 GPS. But 
this speedo won't go over, what was it, 226, 227, 228, 229, I don't know what's happening. It wasn't doing that on my first run. <laughs> what, what a fun car, man. What is it with this car? I, objectively speaking, it's not really that good. I have to admit, it's not. But it, I just keep smiling. And isn't that what it's all about with these cars? I think so. 100 to 200, by the way. It was under 20 seconds, which really surprised me. I didn't expect it to perform like that. So again it keeps surprising me this this little banana oh there we have a golf duty i am going to eat you up come on get him come here you little gti mark a which nobody likes. The likability with this one is strong though, very, very strong. I'm going to wheel him in. Come on, let's play a little. No, he's... GTIs are for boring people. And the bar 500s are for people who have a sense of humor. And Mike definitely has a sense of humor for doing this, for buying this car, for tuning it like this, for making it sound like this. Man, what an awesome, awesome little machine. Man, massive bang from the back. <laughs> I like this. I really do. Thanks, guys, for watching. I hope you like this little video with the most charismatic car I've ever driven, I'd say. You can subscribe to our channel by clicking the big button right here. You can check out this review or go check out the playlist right there. Thanks, guys.